I sponsored that basically the first 39 years there to the university. All I knew about her is that she had been fighting, but I had never heard her speak. I had quite a few reservations about having her coming to, to for me to sponsor and having her come to the university. Because at, in those days, both the, the Chicano movement and the black movement were into cultural nationalism. And uh, I didn't know what she was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was being criticized right and left for having an angel woman, maybe a brown woman, on the street in the middle of the revolution. And so, uh, uh, well, as we, we had actually the biggest event, the largest event the university had ever had. Was to capacity. And the new chancellor was quite, quite surprised and a little <laughs> trembling because of all of his people, an integrated audience for the first time at the yeah. As I listened to Gloria, I started saying, you know what? I agree with what she's saying. You know, I agree with that too. I, so by the end of her speech, I knew that I have made a friend for life. And I have a great deal of admiration. And one last thing I want to tell you. To know Gloria did away with those fears that I had as to who is the most oppressed. It is because of her that I learned. When one is oppressed, we are all oppressed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud to be here on, on International Women's Day. I do think it's one of the few things that the United States has given to the rest of the world that was sort of good, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and you know, even Mother's, Mother's Day started as an anti-war holiday. I hope you know that. An anti-war statement, a profound, radical anti-war statement. Don't let Hallmark tell you anything. <laughs> And it, it isn't that uh, women are more moral or better folks or anything like that than men. It's just that we were raised without our masculinity to prove. And therefore, we have been a disproportionate number always in the peace movements around. I just uh, was at a meeting in Moscow, where I've never been in Russia before, of women journalists from many, many different countries, all of whom have been covering conflict zones around the world. They were Iranian, they were from Israel and Palestine, they were from uh, Italy and you know, a wide variety of, of countries. And their point was that if the, an emphasis on conflict resolution and peacefulness was going to come to the world, it would certainly include men. As long as there's a peaceful man and a warlike woman in the world, we know that it's not about biology, right? It's not. <laughs> but that culturally speaking, it was more likely to come from women. And one of the things we, we talked about was uh, saying to journalism schools and to major news outlets of all sorts, why is it that we don't have peace correspondence as well as war correspondence? The whole area of the And, and the, uh, the elaborateness that is necessary to have conflict res resolution, to have everyone's voices heard, to be able to listen to each other, all those kinds of governance structures which actually were perfected on this continent by the 500 native nations that were here before Europeans showed up. I mean, that was the whole point of their, uh, of their structures. It is a whole specialty. Uh, and it's, it's, it's glorious and, and complicated. And as long as we put our attention towards, only towards hostility and militarism, uh, even if it's stopping it, we won't have the emphasis we need on the alternative to it. We won't understand how complex it is and how much it is a process, how much it is the means that are, are going to, to create the end. Yeah. So I, I hope that on this day, 
uh, we can celebrate each other. We can understand that if it was different for uh, the first, you know, 95% of human history, it can be different again. We can deeply understand that the violence that we experience intimately normalizes the violence everywhere else. Maybe we should call, instead of saying domestic violence, which is greatly forward to even make it visible and to name it and to have laws about it, maybe we should call it now original violence. Because when there is violence between males and females, based on the cult of masculinity, which men didn't create but they got born into, uh, it, it normalizes violence in the street and in foreign policy and everywhere else. If we take that seriously, if we take seriously what is happen happening in the Machiadoras, what is happening uh, to the women in Juarez, what is happening uh, in our own communities, what is, you know, we will be acting uh, locally and having an effect locally. It is all connected in, in that way as well. So I, I thought I, I would read you something that um, I just got as, as a gift the other day from um, someone I don't know, but perhaps some of you in this room know, a novelist, a much beloved Japanese novelist named Haruki Murakami, uh, who was also, is also on, in his country, uh, protesting walls, right? of all kinds. Uh, and here is his kind of credo. Between a high, solid wall and an egg that breaks against it, I will always stand on the side of the egg. Yes, no matter how right the wall may be and how wrong the egg, I will stand with the egg. Someone else will have to decide what is right and what is wrong. Perhaps time or history will decide. If there were a novelist who, for whatever reason, wrote work standing with the wall, of what value would that be? Think of it this way. Each of us is more or less an egg. Each of us is a unique, irreplaceable soul enclosed in a fragile shell. This is true of me, and it is true of each of you. And each of us, to a greater or lesser degree, is confronting a high, solid wall. And it has a name. It's called the system. The system is supposed to protect us, but sometimes it takes on a life of its own, and then it begins to kill us and cause us to kill each other coldly, efficiently, systematically. We are all human beings. We are all individuals transcending nationality and race and religion, fragile eggs faced with a solid wall called the system. To all appearances, we have no hope of winning. The wall is too high, too strong, too cold. If we have any hope of victory at all, <clears throat> it will have to come from our believing in the utter uniqueness and irreplaceability of our own and other souls, and from the warmth we gain by joining our souls together. Take a moment to think about this. Each of us possesses a tangible living soul. The system has no such thing. We must not allow the system to exploit us. We must not allow the system to take on a life of its own. The system did not make us. We made the system. We are on the side of the egg.